right, let's see where we are then. Git branch list. We're on the master branch. Let me, all right, let me first show you code and, and show you the project that we created last time, right? A plain, simple my web project. It's got just a Hello World Azure YAML pipeline that prints Hello Worlds, but it does nothing more than that. Um, all right, let's go back into terminal and let's create a new branch, shall we? Uh, what shall we call it? Let's call it uh, create.net uh, pipeline. Seems appropriate. We've got two branches now. Let's just check out the newly created branch. All right, sorted, great. Let's just publish this branch up to Azure DevOps. Now, if you haven't watched the previous video, you could do that. That'll give you a glimpse of how we created the project, pushed it up to the server, and created a Hello World YAML pipeline in Azure DevOps. You can click the link on the top right of the video to watch the previous video. All right, back in Terminal, let's start by creating a test project. So we're gonna use the .NET command line to do that. Let's just write .NET new MS test and the minus n switches to give it a project name. We're going to call it myweb.test. As I, as I bring you back into the context of code, you can see we now have a test project. I'm simply going to rename the, the default uh, unit test uh, CS file to demo test, update the class name. Let's just give it a, a, a test name. Shall we call it a just another fake test? Because that's exactly what it will be. I'm not going to write a complicated test. I'm just going to do an assert is true, one is one. Let's copy that and create another unit test. Um, let's just give it um, the name of another fake test. Um, and let's just do another assert of um, four is equal to four. And we're sure that these tests are gonna run and pass, but we're gonna run them using the command line first. So let's just do a build of the MyWeb project. And now let's build the MyWeb.test project. Now we could use the .NET CLI to run the test. Uh, we could use that by just typing .NET test and the name of the test project. It tells me right away that I've got two tests and they've passed, but I'd like to see more details than that. And I could do that by just simply using the minus T switch, which would list out all the tests I have in that project. Uh, now let's run the test with uh, the logger and let's set the, let's set the mode to console and, and the verbosity to, to detailed, uh, which would give us the test names as well as the time it took to execute the test as well as the actual test execution status. Now that's great. Um, now we've got these pending changes on our Git repo. Let's stage the changes. Let's commit them locally. Um, let's just say initialize uh, unit test as the comment. And now we're ready to push the changes into our Git repo. All right, so let's just navigate back to the server and we can see um, that the changes of my tests are there, but we haven't yet created a pipeline. So we're gonna we're gonna create a new pipeline for this um, this branch that we've just uh, pushed up to the server. Let's change the context to create.NET pipeline branch and select the Azure YAML file we have. Now I'm just gonna delete all the contents of this file and start from scratch because that's the purpose of the video to show you how to create a .NET core pipeline um, that will run on a on an Ubuntu uh, hosted uh, Azure pool um, and and how it works from scratch so I'm gonna name the pipeline myweb.ci uh, let's just use the trigger flag and set the branch execution for CI on the create.net pipeline and exclude this pipeline from running when there are commits on the master branch I'm using the switch batch is true and the purpose of using that is to be able to bundle any changes if there are multiple commits so the pipeline only triggers uh, collectively rather than triggering for each change. I'm going to use the Ubuntu latest pool um, and and you could use the Windows latest pool if you want it or the Mac OS pool. You know there when you use the Windows pool there are some things that come easy um, and we'll talk about that when we get to talking about the uh, code coverage. Um, so I'm setting the variable uh, build configuration as release because I want to be building my code as in release mode. And the first task that I will write here in the pipeline is the task to install the .NET Core SDK. And this is clearly important because if I'm running on a non-Windows uh, agent, I want to make sure that my agent has uh, the .NET uh, 
SDK installed. Now, if you go back to your project uh, that we created, you would see that we're using uh, 3.1 of the .NET Core framework. And that's exactly what we're going to ask for here, is that when we install .NET Core, we want to be installing a version of 3.1. We're not too pressed about the minor version, but at least for the major version, we want to select 3.1. So that's done. Uh, the next task uh, we're going to use is to set the version of the .NET framework that's used to the version that we're installing. Uh, and you may even ask, you know, uh, we're already installing that version, why do we have to explicitly set the version? I mean, it, sometimes you end up installing multiple versions or the agent could have multiple versions of .NET and what you don't want to get into uh, is those tricky situations where you've installed the wrong version or you've compiled the code against the wrong version. So we've, we've just set the version uh, to 3.1.x. Now, we get some out-of-box tasks with Azure DevOps uh, for .NET Core. Uh, the first task that I'm showing you here is to build the project. Now, we're simply using the build command, and we're saying go look for any csproj files within, within the source code and compile them using the configuration we've specified, which in this case is the release configuration. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use the other switch available in this task, which is the test. Um, and I just have to specify the wildcard switch for where the test project is within within my source code, um, and I'm you know I'm I'm using the naming convention where my test project ends with the keyword test, so I've just used that to specify the path of the project file for test. And again, we're going to run the test in in release mode. Now the test run title I'm going to use the test run underscore builds or build number. Uh, the build or build number is a predefined variable, which is useful because when the test file gets generated, you want it to carry the same version number as the build ID, essentially, so you could map them back to uh, and have that logical linking between the two. Now we're building, we're testing. The next thing we want to be doing is generating the binaries, um, and there is a switch available for that within the out-of-box provided tasks. It's called... Um, the publish switch, surprise, surprise. So let's just change the name of the task to binaries because that's essentially what we're doing in this case is we're generating binaries. All right, so let's change the input command uh, to be publish. And as you can see here, there is a special switch available which allows us to specify what we're, what we're compiling is a, is a web project. And the benefit of using this switch is that we could actually package the binaries up as a zip file. Um, so, you know, that package constitutes a deployable asset in itself. So we're going to output the compiled binaries into the build artifact staging directory. Again, this is a predefined um, variable available um, on the, on, within the Azure pipelines. All right, um, so let me just quickly show you the publish web, web projects option here as well. And it's explaining the same thing there that, you know, it just creates the package, keeping in mind that the structure is for a web project. All right, so we've done the build, we've done the test, we've created the binaries. Now what we want to be doing is we want to be uploading the binaries or the zip package that we've created in this case. Uh, and attach that essentially to our pipeline. So if we have a multi-step YAML pipeline or if we've got separate processes that build uh, an artifact and separate pipelines that do the deployments, then we still want to have the artifact generated by the first pipeline available for any other uh, pipeline to use. Um, so essentially we're going to use the out-of-box publish task um, and we're just going to specify the path where we're generating the artifact uh, that needs to be published. So um, that's all. Let's just save the changes uh, that we've done. Let's call it, uh, you know, initialize.NET pipeline. Let's commit the changes to our YAML file. And we're, we're sort of ready to run the pipeline. Let's just uh, rename it so there's no confusion. This is the myweb.NET uh, pipeline demo. Let's trigger the pipeline. All right.
So the pipeline is initializing, as you can see, is checking out that specific branch where we have our YAML file. It's installed the .NET Core SDK. It set the version of .NET to be used. Now it's just going through the build process. Just progressing on, it's moving on to running the tests. Tests executed, it's generating the binaries, it's publishing the output, and that's, that's successful. Uh, easy peasy, it took about 48 seconds to run, not bad. So if that was your CI process, happy days. All right, let's step through this in detail. Um, as you can see, you know, the, the branch is checked out. It's in detached mode. And we're running on Ubuntu. And it clearly goes in and then downloads the .NET SDK. Um, and then does the extraction and installs it on the agent. And that's the version 3.1.201. And then it finds that version and sets that as the default .NET Core version to use for this pipeline. We can see that our code is compiled, the individual tests are executed, and then that's the test file that gets generated, the TRX file. Um, these are the actual binaries that are generated, and then it basically publishes uh, the assets and does a cleanup and removes any cache credentials. So if we go into the details mode, we can see it's managed to execute all the two tests that we had. And we can change the, the flags on here and see all the tests that have been run. You know, if we had any failed tests, we could just click, click from here, see the failure, the stack trace, and all of that good stuff from within the context of the pipeline. Now, if you go on code coverage, you're going to see that there's no code coverage that's published. Let's come back to that in a second. You know, the, that's the artifact that's been generated by the pipeline. It's in a zip mode, and it's attached to the pipeline. Now, coming into code coverage, if this was a Windows... Uh, hosted agent, the code coverage file would have been auto-generated for us. But because we're running the pipeline on Ubuntu, a non-Windows platform, we have to essentially tell the pipeline that the code coverage file needs to be generated to support a cross-platform um, format. And in this case, the cross-platform code coverage format um, needs to either be in Kobachura or Jacoco. Uh, so, you know, .NET has this uh, really cool open source tool that's called Coverlet. And Coverlet generates the required output format for uh, the code coverage uh, that can then be consumed within Azure DevOps. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the custom uh, command within, within the .NET Core CLI and install uh, the, the tool um, in a global path, uh, which we're going to then use to generate uh, the report format that Azure DevOps can then parse in uh, to render the, uh, the code coverage results. So here's the script. Um, you know, we're, we're simply installing the report generator tool. We're telling the report generator tool that we need to generate a report. Um, and we're redirecting it to the location where it can find the necessary code coverage uh, Kovachura uh, XML format and then telling it you know the target directory where we need the the uh, test uh, code coverage results to be produced if I can spell coverlet yep that's it and then we have the choice here to specify which uh, report format we want to use so the report type we're going to generate is Kovachura Okay, let's just give the task a name. And that's the final bit um, to the puzzle here. We just need to publish the code coverage result file. Um, you know, in this step, we just essentially need to tell Azure DevOps that we've got the Kobachura, um code coverage um, file, and that's the location where the file can be picked up from. XML. Great. So let's just quickly look at it again. We're, we're just simply telling .NET uh, to use the cro cross-platform code, code coverage, disabling the ad do app domain, 
installing the global report generator tool, telling the tool which format to use and where to generate the output report, and then telling Azure DevOps where that report is available, what format it supports, so that it could pick it up and process it and publish that into the code coverage um, summary within the Azure YAML pipeline. So let's save this and let's just call add code coverage as our commit message. Push the changes into the Azure YAML file. Now because we've got CI configured on this branch, the pipeline triggers itself. Um, the last time we talked, so it took about 46 uh, seconds to process the pipeline, uh, build, test, uh, generate the binaries and then publish uh, the artifacts into Azure DevOps. Let's see how long the pipeline now takes that we're using, uh, we're adding the extra step to actually generate the code coverage file. So here we go, it's now actually installing the report generator, it creates the report, publishes the report, the binaries. Not bad, still under a minute, 53 seconds. Okay, let's look at the summary. Um, we still have two tests and the two tests have passed, but this time around when we go on code coverage, we can see we've got a code coverage report that's been generated. Now we have two artifacts that have been uploaded, once the My Web SIP and then the actual code coverage report. Um, so happy days, right? I mean, uh, you've now got a full-fledged pipeline that, that can be used to uh, run .NET Core, um, build, test, uh, code coverage generation, um, you know, feel free to take a screenshot of this uh, pipeline. If you want it, I can upload it. Um, feel free to like the video, share the video, and keep coming back to the channel. There's plenty of more content coming your way.